guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Mina of Minotaur Hotel. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty. Uh, like I said, this is gonna be safe for work mode. Yeah, do I have to start a new save for safe for work mode to work? Uh, y'all in the comments, please tell me. It'd be nice if I didn't have to edit this Minotaur's penis out every time. <laughs> every time! Yes, yep, your little... Uh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, give him some privacy. Yeah, cuz... Yeah. I mean, am I gonna romance the Minotaur? Am I gonna romance the Minotaur? Yeah, let's help give him a bath. Are you sure you want to help with the bath? I don't want you falling and getting hurt. The Minotaur shrinks down, his hunger giving way to a colder gaze. You speak the truth, Master. I may be frail now, but after this meal and, I, and a rest, I will be strong enough to do it. There's a bathroom right here in the infirmary. I understand your worry, but I... I can do it. The air grows tense for a moment. Asterion's voice rings with an unexpected sharpness. He lays his hands over his crotch and closes his legs. Master need not fear. I shall look presentable next time we meet. He bows to you and, remain, and remains like that until you leave the infirmary. Chapter 2. Drink Your Sorrows Away. You're back in the ruined hallway. It stretches into the lobby and further into the hotel. Up ahead, something catches your eye. A leather-bound volume, not too different from the check-in register you found in the reception office, has been carelessly thrown on the floor. The cursory look reveals most of its pages have been torn out, but the cover's backside, can, backside contains something written in the same script from the deed. The glyphs shift and twist under your gaze, marching into place the harder you look. After a few minutes, however, it turns uncomfortable, as if your mind was being drilled by the paper. You take a seat at the lounge's bar, just a foot away from the green glass shard scattered, or, scattered about over the purple stain. You lose yourself in deciphering the script. Asterion's Sentence Hereby the gods of Olympus sentence the prisoner Asterion to eternal damnation, for his meekness and cowardice in the face of adversity. With this sentence his prison is created, a labyrinth born out of the gods' ichor. The labyrinth shall welcome lost mortals from nowhere to go. Among them, a jailer will be picked to command, a re command and rewrite the realm. The Jailer in the Labyrinth's mission is to secure the prisoner's eternal torture. The Jailer shall enjoy... Shit. One second, y'all. The Jailer shall enjoy power and freedom to rewrite the Labyrinth as to better enact his vision. Asterion of Crete, adopted son to King Minos, and every drop of his blasphemous blood is hereby sentenced to the Labyrinth. By this decree, the God's will is done. You obtain the Ledger. The Ledger lists your obtained items, guests, and additional information. Click the icon at the top right corner of the screen to open it. Our Ledger. What do we got? Deed, passports, ledger. So the ledger contains the ledger. Fuck, okay. <laughs> Alright. You're pulled from your trance by the, bag of a, by the bang of a door closing down the hallway. The light around you has shifted. You look back to the garden and the sun is already setting. Time passed in a flash. And now the clop of hooves on marble floor echoes through the corridor. Oh, yep, there he is. The Minotaur enters the lounge, sees you, and bows. Greet him. Hello, Asterion. Did you sleep well? I did, Master. I must thank you for allowing me to rest. It's good to hear. I take it you have no issue with your bath? I did not. Asterion stands up and looks at you directly. I should ask for your forgiveness. I left you waiting without providing a tour of the hotel or its inner workings. That was awfully unfitting of my position as the hotel's keeper. I am, I am at your disposal now, however. There are a few questions eating away at me, if you don't mind, but we can leave them for later if you aren't feeling well. I am well enough to fulfill my duty. What is it my master wishes to know? Well, to start off... How are you feeling? Well, I'll admit I'm a little worried about you. How are you feeling? Was the shower enjoyable? The Minotaur shifts his gaze, trying to read your expression and tone, looking for a tinge of irony or perhaps malice. I... I am well. It was quite peculiar showering after all those years. I had forgotten what water felt like. It is fortunate that my, my wounds were closed. It could have been a painful affair otherwise. For quite a while, I just stood there under the water, thinking and feeling. All of that is to say, yes, I am doing well. It is kind of you to ask. Is that all you wish to know? What will you ask Asterion? How did you make food appear out of thin air? One second, y'all. It is water time. So, about the food. Back there, you just made fruit appear on your hands. It was like the whole world just blinked for a second. What exactly is going on? 
I am frightfully sorry, my lord. I failed to explain it ahead of time. This realm operates under peculiar rules. It, it relates to the oath I swore. Contracts, oaths, promises, all manifestations of will from the master that can be made to have binding effect. Laws in this land are self-enforcing, if branded by the Lord's might. The oath I swore, it relates to one ancient piece of law, the Statute of Joseph the Merciful. In one of its articles, it allows me to summon food. Under most circumstances, the swearing of the oath would have been a formal event, wherein I would have read this full statute, but this situation was dire indeed. I am sorry, my lord, but as soon as possible I shall present you the statute for your consideration. Thanks. I don't like signing contracts I didn't read. But don't go over exerting yourself. I suppose this I suppose this isn't a priority right now. Getting you patched up is more important. Still, that isn't exactly what I asked you about. You can summon food because of the oath, but how can food be summoned like that in the first place? In other words, what kind of place is this? The Minotaur's gaze goes to the floor, his hooves scrape against it. This realm was created to imprison me. The Jailer's mission is to keep watch, and for that purpose the gods saw fit that matter could be spontaneously created. So the Jailer's job would not be interrupted by petty things such as material limitations. It is, as well, the Master's compensation. Being able to create whatever your heart desires out of thin air. That's quite a reward, wouldn't you say? That's right. This is no small power. With some creativity, anyone can make a fortune off of this place. Well, there are a few limitations. Mainly, the realm refuses to make metals such as gold and silver in large quantities. But previous masters were quite creative. That did not stop them from amassing fortunes of their own. As Keeper, it is my duty to instruct you on this matter. I can show you how to summon such materials. I'd appreciate that a lot, but we can leave that for later if it's complicated. I have more, I have more I'd like to discuss with you. Very well. What is it Master wishes to know? What other mythical creatures are there? I'm still a bit shaken up after learning Greek gods are real, or were. There are a lot of implications to that, you know. For example, I can assume there's an afterlife then? Perhaps. I was sent to an afterlife after my death. It was called Hades. But that was back then, thousands of years ago. I know not what happened to the gods, or if their realm persists to this day. Neither do I know if, they are, if other afterlife realms exist in the first place, although I do believe that is the case. I am aware, however, that the worship of the Olympians has long gone out of favor. If Master would entertain my curiosity, is it still so? No one worships them, no. Ah, something on my tongue. Hair. It's a dead, it's a dead religion, that's for sure. Most you'll find is people studying it during history classes, and some place, in some places, do do use the gods as symbols. That's about it. I see. Then in this regard, nothing changed since I was locked away. There's something I want to know, however. You told me about the gods and other mythical beings. I want to know more about that, if you don't mind. Ah, uh, I see. Yes, that is a question masters of previous times struggled with as well. Despite my thousands of years, I must admit I do not possess complete knowledge about the variety of mythical beings that exist. I know only of those that passed by this hotel, and of what they were kind enough to share with me. They used a charm to pass unnoticed as humans. It is. It wasn't always like that. That custom began only a handful of centuries ago. When I was a child, there was no such thing. My true form was plain for everyone to see, and Father Minos made sure I was seen. Regardless, their charms never worked in this realm. It's like, you know, water time. Alrighty. Regardless, their charms never worked in this realm. I do not know why, but it was always a constant. It was quite peculiar back then. Human and supernatural guests mingled together. It is always jarring at first, but after a while it becomes special. Humans are eager to learn about the unknown, and mythical beings yearn to live without a disguise. Now, back to the 20th century. They had taken you to using a... What was the word again? It was a booklet they carried around. A passport? Yes, a passport. They would have it enchanted and would keep it close, always. It was inconspicuous. But they'd keep multiple charms with them, jewelry oftentimes, in case they were separated from their documents. Did they make fake passports then? How was that? Oh, I don't think so. I'm sorry that I know not much about it, but I had the impression these booklets were issued by governments. As in, the governments made the enchanted passports. 
It was quite common for mythical beings, even the staff, to be required to report back to their countries for bureaucratic affairs. Or for warfare. Master Jean-Marie was not the only man we lost to the Great Wars. Didn't expect there to be. Bureaucracy around mythical beings. Indeed, it is a tad peculiar. But I would stress that all of this I learned from previous guests. I never saw it for myself. Ah, but before I forget, I found these inside a safe near the, near the reception. You give Asterion the bundle of passports. Are these the enchanted passports? They don't seem anything out of the ordinary. The Minotaur looks over each of the passports. His brow furrows, and for a second, it, and for a second, he, he lowers his, his lower lip quivers. Yes, this is it. I recognize the names. These are the passports. They hated these things. These were their shackles, which is why they were so, which is why they were so eager to stay and work here, in a place where they did not have to hide their true forms. It's not only about their shape either. There was something else these passports did. It made them easy to forget and go unnoticed. Again, I never witnessed it for myself, but often I was told it was terribly difficult to make friends, establish relationships too, when your loved ones are prone to forgetting you ever existed. Yeah, that sounds rough, to say the least. Um, there's there must be a lo there must be a lonely existence. Asterion sinks in thought as he flips over the passport's pages. He did not seem to hear you. When he closes the last one, his gaze returns to you with a somber look that is more somber than before. Does Master have more questions? I think that's all I had in mind for now. This is a lot to take in. That gods and mythical creatures exist for starters, and that this place can just create matter out of thin air. Thanks for telling me all that. I just need some time to process it all. It is a pleasure to serve. Could I provide Master with a drink? Would that please you? He looks behind you, the wall covered by dozens of bottles of liquor. Well, I don't think those are safe. Well, I don't think those are safe. I checked a few of them. They weren't smelling right. That will not be an issue. I can muster more for Master. And very well, go on. The Minotaur walks behind the counter. The world blinks around you, and when you look, he look again, he holds a bottle of whiskey. One second, y'all. It is water time. Alright. He walks with a spring in his step, but stops once he sees the purple stain on the floor. Whatever smidgen of chirpiness was on his face is gone. He lowers himself to the floor and runs a hand over the dried-out wine. He tries scraping the dust off the ground, then rubbing his hand on it to no avail. What's on your mind? The Minotaur speaks without looking up to you. He went all the way, the previous master. Locking me away wasn't enough. He had to kick out all the guests and go as far as breaking the bottles. He knew the wine would heal me. I had one in the infirmary in case I got hurt and needed help, and one here for, more, for my enjoyment. Hope it didn't break the others as well. It is impossible to willfully summon more. Minotaur rises up and supports himself on the counter. He summons a rag and goes through the motions of dusting. No matter. Now, now, what does Masters want? I should tell you up front, the hotel's liquor is quite impressive. Um... Asterion may be up, may be up and walking, but he's still far from being well. He can use the help. You mentioned having more wine bottles. Where are they? I'm sure I can fetch them for you. Asterion looks off to the side, seemingly thinking about your proposal. It is not proper for the Keeper to be assisted by the Master. I suppose, however, it would be in my duty to take you there regardless. If memory serves me well, there ought to be a bottle in the Master's quarters. The two of you return to the hotel's lobby. The spiral staircase, now tinted orange by the skylight, remains as welcoming as before. The fourth floor has no do has no doors, however. Here, this floor is dedicated to the master and those he allows in. The hotel bends to the master's will. I wish for a door, and it will be done. My powers is similar to yours, a bit much weaker. In due time, the hotel shall conform from the ground up to your vision. It barely requires you to focus. Just a passing thought is enough to make the hotel flicker and in and out of reality. The door welcomes you. It flickers away after you and Asterion cross its threshold. Oh, nice. The living room ahead of you seems to have resisted the damage of time better than the rest of the hotel. It is dusty, and some chunks of the wall show the beginnings of mold, and that is nothing compared to the devastation you saw in the kitchen. Hysterion says nothing at first. His gaze seems to be lost in the distance as he walks around inspecting the room. There are lines of wooden carvings on the shelves. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If a super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye